வெல்கம் டு எஸ்விஆர் ஐஏஎஸ் அகாடமி கமான் இந்தியா டாட் காம் இஸ் அவர் வெப்சைட் டுடேஸ் டேட் இஸ் தேர்டீன்த் ஏப்ரல் டூ தௌசண்ட் செவன்டீன் இன் நியூஸ் பேப்பர் அனலைசிஸ் வீடியோ லெக்சர் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி மெனி டாபிக்ஸ் லெட் சி தவர் டாபிக்ஸ் ஒன் பை ஒன் திஸ் ஆர்டிகல் ஹேஸ் பீன் பப்ளிஷ்ட் இன் த எக்கனாமிக் டைம்ஸ் நியூஸ் பேப்பர் இஸ் அபவுட் கவர்மெண்ட் டு லான்ச் சிக்ஸ் தௌசண்ட் குரோர் ருபீஸ் சம்பதா ஸ்கீம் சம்பதா ஸ்கீம் related to food processing in gs paper 3 we have a syllabus called as food processing and related industries in india scope and significance location upstream and downstream requirements food supply chain management so the scheme is related to gs paper 3 is useful sampada stands for scheme for agro marine produce processing and development of agro processing centers so sampada stands for scheme for agro marine produce processing and development of agro processing centers it is launched by union food processing ministry it is a 6000 crore rupees project the main aim is to integrate the current and new schemes which are aimed at reducing the food wastage and to double the farmers income already government of india is implementing mega food park scheme and cold chain projects scheme apart from these two the three new schemes will be integrated and five will be merged as a umbrella scheme that will be known as sampada for overall development of the food processing sector in india when the new schemes launched we will make a separate video lecture on this topics in our website commonindia.com let's briefly see the names of these schemes the three schemes for the supply chain is that creation or expansion of the food processing and preservation capacities and another scheme for the new agro processing clusters and third scheme for the backward and forward linkages the three main objective of the sampada scheme objective number 1 is to bring down the post harvest losses to preferably zero level and second aim is to provide quality food to the consumers at cheaper price and third is to double the farmers income so far government of india has sanctioned 42 mega food park scheme and 234 cold chain projects every year we are losing nearly 92000 crore rupees because of the post harvest losses the cold chains and food park schemes will generate employment opportunity for nearly 3.5 lakh persons and 15 lakh farmers will get benefited because of these projects according to the new plan sampada scheme government will map all the agro clusters in india according to the new scheme government of india will provide up to 10 crore of subsidy grant for creating the infrastructure in the each agro center agro clusters so that food products can be transferred from the place of produce to the place of consumption that's all about important points on this topic sampada to get complete video lecture on this topic visit our website commonindia.com second topic that has been published in the economic times newspaper is the bank and other financial accounts of yours may be blocked if you don't link the accounts with aadhar number by april 30 you may have no said about fatca fatca regulations means foreign tax compliance act foreign tax compliance act are also called as fatca regulations the bank accounts which opened between july 2014 to august 2015 will have to submit their know your customer details and they should link their other numbers to the bank and financial institutions by april 
and they should self certify that they comply with the FATCA regulations. In case account holders are unable to furnish the details means banks have the option to block the accounts. Once the details are given by the account holder later then accounts will be opened. So India and US signed FATCA Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act in the year 2015. It is aimed at boosting the efforts for automatic exchange of financial information between two countries regarding their tax evidence. What are all the accounts will be included in this? Not only bank accounts, it also includes insurance accounts, stock accounts. These accounts should be linked with Aadhaar by April 2017. Next article that has been published in the Economic Times newspaper deals about who is the big, biggest investor in Pakistan. So far, US remained the biggest investor in Pakistan. But in recent times, especially after launching of the One Road, One Belt initiative by China, China has emerged as the biggest investor of Pakistan. So, that, so China is overtaking the US to become the largest foreign direct investor to Pakistan. One Belt, One Road initiative means it is the initiative of China to connect Asia and Europe via road and rail. Recently, a good strain started from China and reached UK within 16 days. Within 16 days. So it took less than half day to reach the goods via sea. And it's also the prices half when compared to the air traffic. In Pakistan, nearly 20 crore people are living there. China pledged to invest nearly 55 billion US dollars in the China Pakistan economic corridor. So One Belt One Road initiative also known as Silk Road plan that aims to revive the trade across the Central Asia and into Europe via a network of railways, ports and highways. China Pakistan economic corridor lies right at the crossroad between the two major networks that China is building. Pakistan is the only country that is called by China as a all-weather strategic partner. All-weather strategic partner. China is going to hold a summit in the May month. The summit name is Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation. America and Pakistan's relations has been strained and become uneasy because US accuses Pakistan of harboring the militants and carrying out the attacks in the neighboring countries like uh, Afghanistan and India. US demands action from Pakistan. But Pakistan consistently delays the proxy forces to influence the po foreign policy objectives. Pakistan denies all the allegations. And after Donald Trump became the president of USA, it may propose a deep economic and military funding cut to Pakistan. At present, Pakistan is the sixth largest recipient of American aid. In the 2018 budget proposal, Trump set about America first policy, which calls for deeper cuts to the foreign assistance. So let's prepare on this topic. To get separate video on this topic, visit our website comeonindia.com. This article has been published in the Economic Times newspaper. The article deals about UK's offer of cutting edge defense technologies to India to make weapons. UK wants to strengthen its cooperation with India in fight against terrorism and extremism. UK is also ready to offer the cutting edge military technology for co-production of the weapon system. Recently, US Secretary of State, UK UK's Secretary of State visited India 
and held the first India-UK strategic dialogue. It was agreed in the November 2015 during our Prime Minister's visit to London as a part of the bilateral defence and international security partnership. So the first UK-India strategic dialogue was held recently. Both countries stressed the need to increase the cooperation on the cyber security front to counter the expanding online radicalization of the youth. Britain said that the combination of the British expertise and experience with the Indian intelligence and brain power could become the game changer in the defense production sector. So in this background, let's prepare thoroughly on the changing nature of India-UK relations, especially in the defense sector. To get a video lecture on the India-UK relations, visit our website comeonindia.com. This article has been published in the Economic Times newspaper and it deals with the AFSA. Recently, Government of India replied to the Supreme Court that the armed forces in the AFSA area must get immunity. Supreme Court in the July 2016 made it clear that there is there should be no immunity for the human rights violations by the members of armed forces. FIR should be registered immediately for the human rights violations by the armed forces even in the disturbed areas. Disturbed areas is an area can be announced under Armed Forces Special Powers Act. So AFSA enforced in the disturbed areas of some of the northeastern states and in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. According to the AFSA Act, it provides immunity to the army men from inquiry by police for the alleged deaths and excesses during the operations against insurgents and militants. So it means during operations against insurgents or militants, army men gets complete power. Whatever the acts done by the army men during these operations in the disturbed areas under AFSA Act cannot be questioned and no FIR can be registered against them. But in July 2016, Supreme Court said that for the human rights violations by the army men, FIR can be registered even in the disturbed areas announced under AFSA Act. Recently, Supreme Court filed, so, sorry, the central government has filed a curative petition in the Supreme Court for the dilution of the Supreme Court's July 2016 judgment. If FIR is registered against the army men during the operations against militants and insurgents, it is impossible to maintain the peace and security. Army men may fear for FIR during the operations. When insurgents and militants with heavy weapons and approach the army men, army men need to deal with the full force. If army men fear for FIR, for a mil militant's death, then it will be difficult to win the battle against insurgents and militants. These insurgents and militants aim is to secede ter territories from India. So army men should be given full freedom where the militants and terrorist attacks are high. But human rights activists and Amnesty International says that no blanket immunity should be given to the human rights violations by the army men. FIR should be registered against them. This is the argument given by the human rights organizations and Amnesty International. We have provided a separate video lecture on the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, its various features, whether it should be withdrawn or not. If you are interested to join our IAS 2018 Foundation course, visit our website comeonindia.com. Our, if you have any query, you can WhatsApp. Our WhatsApp number is 809-809-9922. Our director is using the number. If you want to ask any query from our director, you can WhatsApp to this number. You can ask your doubts via email as well. Our email ID is upsc at the rate of 
come on india.com thank you for watching this video lecture and all the best for your ias 2018 exam preparation thank you